This video is part of the series on the Control 101 MATLAB Toolbox. Here we're going to look at the tank level app files. So the community agreed on an outline structure for a Control 101 course and the MATLAB Control 101 Toolbox has been developed to support this course. And the reason is that MATLAB tools enable visualization and support tedious number crunching requirements and so they allow students to focus on core concepts. This video then is going to focus on tank level for a system which is subject to numerous possible sources of uncertainty. And tank level obviously is a common example used in Control 101 courses. Let's look at the context then of the tank level system. So here's a picture of a typical tank and you can see we've got an inflow here. We've put it in the top for convenience, which you can control. You can basically say how much flow is going in. We also have a disturbance flow coming in. So something you cannot control. And we're going to assume that this is largely random. We've also got blockages to the outlet pipe represented by this red rectangle. So sometimes it's fully blocked, sometimes it's partially blocked, sometimes not blocked at all. And the tank will also be defined by its cross-sectional area and of course the area of the outlet pipe. First up then, tank level behaviour. So a core learning outcome is to understand the behaviour of a tank. For example, how fast does it fill? How deep is the steady state? What is the impact of changes to the main or the disturbance inflows? What's the impact of changing the blockage? What happens if we change the area and the outlet pipe? So the first step, tank level behavior, is used to allow users to explore these questions and check the answers accord with their expectations. Let's do a live demonstration then. So if I bring the app onto the screen, <coughs> you can see it here. And basically I can set some of my parameters. You can see I can change the area here and you'll see the tank changes as I change the area. I can change the size of the outlet pipe. Okay. And I can change the size of the flow with these sliders here. And then when I'm ready, I say, yep, yeah, right. I'll try that. Press simulate. And what you will see is you will see the tank beginning to fill and to the graph in the bottom showing you how the depth has changed. Now what I might want to do is say, okay, what happens if I make the area a bit bigger? So let's change it from seven to 10 and let's simulate again. And now you can see you get slightly different behavior. It basically fills up more slowly, but it gets to the same depth. What happens if I change R? So I've made the outlet pipe here a bit thinner. Let's simulate again. And now you can see it fills to a deeper depth. Is that what you expected? What if I make R very, very big and simulate? Is it doing what I expected? So the whole point here is nice and easy to visualize what is happening. Now, I can also add these disturbance flows. So what happens if I add a disturbance flow? Let's make it 0 0.1. How does that change the behavior? So I simulate this and we might want to move this legend to uh, in a moment to get it. Oh, sorry, my screen's being a bit naughty. So you can see the green and the purple lines show you no disturbance with disturbance. Is that what you expected? Now, what if I block the pipe? I'm going to do a 60% blockage of the pipe. You can see that this red rectangle has come down to represent the blockage. What happens now? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, the tank is filling to a deeper depth. Now, a final thing to note is if you get fed up waiting for all these animations, you can switch the animation off. So let's clean the figure. And now what you can do is you will get responses which basically appear instantly. So that once you've seen the animation and you're happy with what's going on, you can skip that bit if you just want to go straight to the graphs. Next thing to note is there are manuals to support each of these apps. And the manuals basically show you a lot of the underpinning mathematics, modeling and so forth. And they also show you some of the MATLAB code. The manual is opened automatically 
in the user's current working directory when you run the app and so you can see it but also because it creates your own personal copy it means you can save it you can edit it you can do what you want with it so next app then a tank level control with PI compensation so a core learning outcome is to understand how to ensure the depth reaches the required value and with good behavior and for this we're going to use a feedback loop so I've given a simple example here of a feedback loop core questions are going to revolve around the appropriate choice of compensator again you'll find detail and analysis is available in the manual so here we've got an app and I'm going to bring it across in a moment which allows you to explore the efficacy of PI compensation and how robust is this to normal parameter and disturbance changes right so live demonstration let's bring the app across so here's the app okay and again you'll see we've got simple sliders we can change we can change the size of the tank the area here we can change the size of the outlet we can change the disturbance flow we can change the size of the blockage okay so I've got PI parameters set down here KP and KI so let's simulate and see does this do what I want now here you might not be very happy you might say well that performance isn't particularly good is it I mean look I've got overshoot and it's oscillating all over the place what happens if I'm increase the blockage so now the blockage has gone to 60 percent and now you see actually the behaviors even worse so the whole point of this app is you can explore okay the impact of changing KPKI for different tank setups now I'm not in this um, video going to show you how to do a good design because that's something you need to do in your own time the key point is that this app allows you to explore what happens if I make KP very very large is that a good idea is that a bad idea and actually you might think oh that behavior might be slightly better though of course you have had to use a very large inflow during transients you can also um, let's refresh the screen change the timing of the disturbances so you can see here that now what's going to happen is the disturbance will come in mid simulation and now what you're interested in is how well does the system react to that disturbance and you can see here there's a very slight change when the disturbance comes in but it's not actually having a huge impact and you can also do the blockage from steady state so again you'll see everything's going fine we're in steady state and then we'll introduce a blockage oh sorry we introduce the blockage we're at steady state and you can see here how the system has responded to that blockage and you'll see it's rejected it quite well so maybe this PI compensator isn't too bad okay so final one tank level storyline app it's important that students understand the entire control design process so first analyze open loop behaviors and understand where and how feedback control might be needed second four mathematical models to capture the system behavior third evaluate manual or open loop control and will these be adequate so if you've got a good model you might be able to come with an open loop control law that does a good job next undertake systematic model based control designs such as PI and finally evaluate the closed loop performance in a realistic scenario so with uncertainty and disturbances and so forth and so the storyline app allows you to go through this process steps one to five and basically understand the need for it so again let's look at our live demonstration so I'll bring the app across and here the key thing to notice is you've got these five tabs at the bottom so we start with open loop behavior I'll switch the animation off so we can go a bit faster and this is a bit like the app you saw before so you can basically look at what happens as you change parameters I can have the disturbance throughout or I can have the disturbance come in mid simulation um, so now you'll see you'll see the impact of the disturbance with this kink in the graph how the behavior changes same with the blockage I can make the blockage come mid simulation and what impact does that have and again you see when I introduce the blockage mid simulation you can see the impact 
here. So there's your open loop behavior. So you can basically play around, get an understanding. How does this system behave? Once you've done that, we move to modeling. So refresh the screen, simulate. And here we're doing time constant and gain modeling. So you can see the behavior and you can see this graph here shows you how do you get the time constant? How do you get the gain? How might that vary as you change the parameters? So you see the values change as you change the tank parameters. So once you're happy and you've done your modeling and you're going to say, right, this is the system I'm going to work with, you might say, let's try manual control. So manual control is basically you set the input flow and we're going to use this slider and you're going to try and get the depth to this green line. So I think what I'll do is I'll make R a bit smaller. So let's start the simulation and you can see basically as I change the input, can you see the bottom right figure? As I change the slider, you'll see I'm changing the input flow. Okay, and if you look in the picture at the top, you'll see how the input flow changes. Now, what I want to do is I want to get the depth up to that level. Okay, the question is, can I manage it? Well, we're getting there now with a very, very large inlet flow. Okay, now, what you can't see here is any disturbances. So what I'm going to do is stop the simulation and now I'm going to allow for random changes in disturbance and blockages. Okay, and let's run it again. So now I've, I've left the input at a high level, but what you will see is in a short while we're going to get random changes. See down here in the bottom right in disturbances and blockages. And every time the disturbances and the blockages change, you will find you get changes in the behavior of the level. And so our aim is to get the level up to this green line. And the question is, are we going to be able to keep it on that green line? You see, now we've gone too deep. So let's oh, bring the flow down. I'm going to bring it down quite a long way. OK, but you'll see, see how much I've brought the input down in this bottom right figure and still it's too deep. And that's because we've got a blockage. You see that yellow line in the bottom right. So am I managing to bring the level down yet? Not yet, because we've still got a significant blockage. But then when the blockage goes, you'll find the tank will start to empty quite quickly. OK, and so your job is to try and get the input to a level which maintains the depth where you want it to be. Now, what you're going to discover very quickly is that this is rather tedious and rather difficult, and it's difficult to keep the level at the desired um, depth. So we want automatic design. So we go across here to PI. Now I'm not going to bother um, changing any of the parameters here. I'm just, oh, I should have refreshed first. Um, I'm just going to do a simulation. And again, you'll see, as we discussed earlier, you can now experiment with changing P and I um, to see how the system works and come up with a design that you're happy with. So I don't know if, if that's going to be slightly better with a bigger K. Yeah, if I increase the K, it's slightly better. Um, but of course, we do get very large flows in the transients. So once you've got a PI you're happy with, final tab is to actually investigate the closed loop behavior in a realistic scenario. Now, this scenario, you see we could have blockages. We've also included measurement noise and measurement delay. So when we run this, you'll see what happens. OK, so because there's blockages, there's noise and there's measurement delay, you will find that the PI is going to struggle to keep the system at the correct depth because you're going to have randomly changing disturbances happening all the time. So you see initially it's almost getting there. Maybe it's not uh, not tuned particularly well, but you see we get changes in target. So we're asking, is our control law responding to those changes in target? OK, and down here in the bottom right, you see we get changes in the measurement delay, changes in the noise magnitude, changes in the blockage, changes in the disturbance. If you look at this figure, you see the blue figure is the true depth and the red is actually the measured depth. So what your sensor is telling you and clearly the sensor is lagging behind slightly as well as being noisy. So what you want to evaluate is can you actually control the depth with all these 
different realistic scenarios going on. Now, obviously, I've not tuned this PI particularly well because it's random, but hopefully you get the idea of what the app is for. OK, so we've demonstrated how to run and use the tank level apps in the Control 101 toolbox. So these can be deployed during lectures because they run quite quickly and for students in private study. So students can appreciate and relate their technical and analytical learning to authentic systems. The apps can also be used to support pre and post laboratory activities related to tank level equipment. And the manuals contain some MATLAB source code that can be used as templates for individual investigations. So if you want to make modifications or do scenarios that go beyond that allowed by the apps.